And I think, uh, well, this is an interesting question about society that I think is always being addressed is like, it's proclivity to f- descend into a complete orderless chaos. Yeah. And, uh, what are we, or, three days away from chaos, something like that? Uh, probably less, fucking 12 hours. <laughs> One thing goes. As soon as the grocery stores are gone. Yeah, that's it. As soon as the liquor's gone. Everyone's <laughs> fucking riding. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, or it's proclivity to become a tyranny, like North Korea, too structured. Yeah. You know? So, like, you can you control just the right amount, you know? Or you, like... It's just the right amount of freedom and just the right amount of individual responsibility, and it's like it seems to be it has to be like just this delicate balance. And sometimes it, feels it like is that's like why that. we have the left and the right. In the yeah, world, like, and they're supposed to like discuss and compare and come to consensus, but instead, they're, today they're just. I mean, maybe they've always been like this. And, and this is probably it was separation a, rather yeah, than finding a, a common ground. Yeah, it's so like, I mean, like just that show like Crossfire that you sent me the link to with Frank Zabba talking Amazing. about free speech. Amazing, Crossfire. Give well, it's like they have them. a guy from the left and the right and they're both just hosting the show together. And, and they're, they're good friends. Yeah. And they're, I love that. And yeah. they got people in the middle and amongst the crossfires. Like, I'm going to have this point of view, you're going to have that point of view. You're somewhere in the middle, let's figure this out. Yeah, let's come debate. to a consensus let's about fucking this. talk. Yeah. Man, and it's just that, like, is a, such a problem. Like, democracy, democracy won't work if we're not willing to talk to each other. Mm. And if, like, oh, you're a leftist, I'm not talking to you. Or you're right wing, I'm, like you Trump supporter piece of shit. It's like, the preconceptions it's, that we have is yeah. is really the issue. When you talk to someone from the left or from the right, you have these preconceptions about them. Instead, you actually have all this common ground. You got all this stuff you could be talking about. What you're really just seeing is like that 10% is weird and different about you. I don't like you. I'll hate you. And I know people that won't talk to each other because they're on the left or the right. And I find that really sad. That happened to me mm. when I went to England the last time when I was drinking with a bunch of my dad's friends from England and he like befriended someone at a bar while we're out drinking, getting talking about politics, which is one of the reasons I don't like talking about it any like I enjoy talking about it with people that can have an informed opinion on on it. I enjoy that. But in a bar situation or a situation where there's people that will just hold the floor and just hold up the conversation for no reason or another. And especially when you're drinking, you never know what can come out of your mouth anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so you're out drinking and the next thing you know they're talking about politics and my dad just befriends this guy this guy takes off says great to see you Kirk blah 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 walks out of the bar and I was like what the hell happened we were supposed to be drinking with him all night my dad's like oh whatever left wing right wing whatever he was I'm sure I can figure out what my dad is but uh, you know I don't want to it's not about that it's about befriending someone because they have different political views as you when you agree on so much you know so yeah. it's little things and that seems to be how we divide ourselves today is just on the little tiny things what kind of car do you drive? What kind of clothes do you wear? Like, whether they'll be friends uh, with you or not. What's your favorite now. hockey team? Yeah, your favorite like... hockey team. Oh, we're best friends for life now. It's like... Oh, so... And yeah, people get some <coughs> like that. I wonder how many, like, relationships start at bars. It's because it's like, oh my god, you love yeah. fucking whatever the fuck. It's like... It's like this whole idea of nationalism. Person. It's, like, it's like, oh, you're from this country and I love you, which is great. I think it's really cool. It's got its pros, but we should have this more sense of community with the whole world. I mean, that's what Mushrooms does for you, really, is just like... Oh, it gives you a Paints this of, picture yeah. of the earth and says, here you are, you little <laughs> piece of speck of dust, <laughs> nothing. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing. You're just You're like, nothing. <laughs> you're nothing and everything at the same time, because without that little speck, the painting's not complete. Exactly, you know I mean? yeah. Well, that's exactly thing, it. And all it is is made up of little tiny specks, and you're one of them, so... I love that feeling. There's billions, billions, trillions, unlimited number. You're just one of those things that's contributing to the whole thing. Well, I think it's a perfect message because it's like, you you need to, well, it, I, fucking, okay, if we're talking about like generalizing psychedelic experiences, I find I always go through like in the beginning of especially mushroom trips, it's like just, just this phase of just being humbled, you know, yeah, like you just like yeah. bowing onto the earth, like in the face of this thing, you know, it's like, oh Jesus, like, oh I've taken my life so seriously. I was thinking I was so important. I was thinking I everything. Know, like, I know. Everything you know, mattered. <laughs> yeah, and it just it, it humbles the shit out of you. And then, uh, but then you also realize like that the, the point you make about the painting not being complete without you yeah. there. That like the complete, real, total, accurate picture of reality involves you yeah. in it yeah. and you doing what you do. And even aside from like. Um, I think it's important for everyone, like everyone to contribute their point of view and stuff, like regardless of uh, if you're a genius or not or any of these things, it's like 
you know, just the fact that your brain's firing in a way that no other brain has fired before, yeah. the conclusions you might draw. I know all sorts of people that might just be the most insane people on a regular basis that you can hardly even stand to be in the same room as or talking the most crazy shit and every once in a while that just drop like the most gold and Chris gold nugget. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> modern man. All the time. Chris Gillis is the modern man. Look at me. He's got music. He's, he's got, got an album called fucking... Frames. Ten songs. It's amazing. It's amazing. Um, yeah, they drop these little bits of wisdom, this little bit of gold because they're just much part of it and they're just object objectively viewing it the same as you are and you can get this information from that's why you gotta listen to everybody it's one of my favorite things about hitchhiking man it's like you just get a complete random stranger who picks you up and then you start talking it's like it starts out with like you get the basic shit out of the way my name's this your name's that we're both from wherever the fuck blah 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 blah. (laughs) alright so what do you think's going on here (laughs) I think we're in a computer simulation this guy (laughs) says exactly (laughs) if you get right at it Matrix is real yeah (laughs) we almost got back on the mushroom show I forgot we forgot to tell the end of that story about you in having your second mushroom trip which was like the most powerful I (laughs) you're having this epiphany in the next room yeah me Anton and Dylan sitting in the other room we've got um, a porcupine tree DVD on music DVD and we thought I thought <laughs> time genius I was like man maybe we should put a blanket on TV I don't know why I thought this would be cool we did it it was amazing I tried it since it's awful but <laughs> <laughs> bad reviews on but, the blanket on the TV but if you try it when you're on psychedelics, it was like this furry, furry blanket, and it would like change depths. All of a sudden, the light from the TV would hit different points of the furry blanket. So now the picture actually had depth, as if you were looking at a painting, you know, like uh, an actual paint painting. Like if you've seen any Picasso's work or anything, you get, there's depth, depth to the pictures. Mm-hmm. However many layers, the back and then the clouds or whatever the star, there's depth that actually comes out at you with the brush strokes. You can see it, and that's how it felt. With this furry blanket on the TV, was just like now had depth to it because it had the fur and oh, it was coming yeah. through at certain levels. And we watched that whole Porcupine Tree music DVD with the blanket on the TV, and all of us were loving it. It was <laughs> sick. I was in the room for part of that, I think. <laughs> yeah, I remember been, seeing because yeah. I remember the next day too. We were looking at that blanket because I, I know personally, and this is what's cool about psychedelics too. Is everyone has like such a subjective experience, but I was seeing these crazy like the depth you describe is accurate. Yeah, and then the visuals I was having was these was totally crazy different. Floral. Yeah. I was having these crazy floral visions, like flower patterns and like circular mandalas yeah. and and like weird geometric towers kind of growing yeah. out of the TV screen and shit. And I remember just being like, whoa, like I thought we that, watched that DVD and yeah, it was just a band playing. It yeah. was just like, but we were seeing all this crazy stuff, which is almost like a filter for our own interpretation rather than seeing it matter of fact, having that filter was your subjective cool. experience becomes so intensified. Yeah. It's like Everyone's you, seeing something different. Now, yeah. A different point of view. It's like uh Terrence McKenna has this line where he would say, you're going to do psychedelics. You're going to experience things that no one else has ever experienced before and that no one else is ever going to experience again. Yeah. And he would make the argument that, like, you don't really become... Well, okay, I don't want to get so absolutist about psychedelics like McKenna would, uh, but there's definitely something to be said for developing yourself as a sheer and utter individual, like a unique being, you know, by having experiences that no one else has had ever. Yeah. And they're so intense and profound and meaningful and deep and uh but anyways back to the fucking blanket we were checking it out the next day because i was just like i thought it was a blanket i thought the blanket itself had these floral patterns and the light yeah, was shining was through not, them yeah it was just a brown blanket there was nothing and on you it were having all that in your head yeah, yeah and i was just like holy shit i can't believe that was just a damn brown blanket <laughs> blew my mind but well, yeah i mean fuck that was a good trip man I remember before I, like, went off into the room, I was looking around the living room and just, like, the way the light was dancing around the room and everything, I, I, and I remember looking at the corners where the walls and the ceilings would meet each other, and none of them were connected. It was like, that wall over there was just floating in space, yeah, the yeah. ceiling was floating in some other yeah, space, and nothing was connected, and I could see, like, how they were separated by, like, a foot or two and a half foot gap or something, like, yeah. between the corners of the walls and the ceilings and shit and, like, just seeing empty space. It was like we were in this, like, half-held-together, like, cube floating through space. And, uh... It, you know, you can't, like, really even begin to... It's like you were talking about how the information just goes into your head. Yeah. And it's like, you can't 
like when that is what's happening to you, like as far as you're concerned, that is it's what you're happening. That's, like, that's your reality. Yeah. It's like just seeing how the walls are not together and they're bouncing around each other and floating through. And you're, it's just like that is an insane experience. And I think definitely this is a this would be in support of the argument that not everyone should be having psychedelics. Is that like that just might break your brain if you're if your I think it does structure is too people, rigid yeah. like. You're not ready for that thing. Like it's gonna obliterate. even the idea of it scares some people. I see, I see the terror in their eyes. The idea of jumping in the cold lake scares some people. You can watch their body tense up. When you see them shiver at the thought. Yeah, yeah. It's like that thought is actually worse than the experience. It's a mental endurance, and I don't feel like people are very tough right now. I feel like we want in our country anyway. What we've seen is like immediate mm-hmm. satisfaction, quick, easy, free. Quick, easy, free. Yeah. Be weary of those words. Quick, easy, and free. If it's quick, easy, and free, it's probably not worth it. It's doing. bullshit. The yeah. good things are long <laughs> uh, campaigns of struggle hard, and battle yeah. and hard work. And, like, I, one of my students said today, because I teach music for most of my work, and then I work part-time at a music store, but one of my students said, well, I'd like the easy way. I'd, like, I want to learn this song the easy way. And I was like, well, where, where will that get you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I was just like, with everyone else, with everyone else that wants the easy way, you well, gonna it's like the world is owned by mediocrity or whatever. It's someone's quote. Oh, yeah. It's like you're gonna end up in the the fat lazy portion. And they're like, well, that's what I want. And I was like, well, that's fine. <laughs> I was like, if that's oh. what you want, then that's fine. Then pursue that. But I'm telling you, if you take the hard way, you're gonna be better at the end of it. We should be doing both. Anytime a student says, should I do it this way? Should I do it that way? Both. Should I play with the pick? Should I play with my fingers? Yeah, both. both yeah. Should I play open hand? Should I play cross hand? Both. If you can do both, why wouldn't you want to be good at both? Especially pick and finger. And it's like a, a snowboarder riding goofy and regular. Yeah, it's like if you want to be great, you should be doing both. Why are we even... Why Should yeah. I do this way or that way? Like, Do it every way. Yeah, yeah. do it every way you possibly can. Expand well, like you look at Tosin Abbasi on the guitar, and he has like so many fucking ridiculous... Or Josh Martin's a, a really great example, too. Um at least as far as just guitar technique in particular, just, like, employing so many different uh, styles of music and uh, physical techniques with the tapping and the thumping and the slapping and the playing with the pick and the finger picking and then just your sheer left hand technique, too. And it's, like, all those things are just tools that you fit in your belt and you can just, like, when you're in that creative uh, flow where it's just kind of coming through you, you have, like you become more boundless in your capacity to articulate the musical ideas on your instrument through developing these skills mm. that like the creative flow can just be completely un uh, I feel like I don't you know, have pure or whatever. Yeah, I feel like the pureness of that creativity I don't get to deal with that with many students. And it's a it's a shame because that's the real essence of the music. A lot of students it's simply the mechanics of it. It's simply the muscle memory. Is simply put your fingers here, do this exercise. But really, that's what it comes down to. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. You want to be able to just freely express yourself on the instrument, of course, like speaking. The way you express speak. myself. Yeah, totally. That's what I want it to be, my idea, and then it comes out. I want it to be that on the guitar. I'm feeling this, and then it comes out. So all that physical exercise is simply so that when it comes down to the moment, you don't have to think about it, and you can just express yourself. And I feel like a lot of people forget that, and everything's an exercise, you know, all the time. Yeah. It's so like, yeah, I, I say I can't really communicate with that with some of my students. Some of them I can, and some of them I feel like I'm instilling it from a very early age, where it's just like, I'm not your typical music teacher to say, like, this is how it is, this is how it has to be. Everything's up for interpretation. If you want to bang away on the keys, I think that sounds cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, you hit three or four keys at the same time, well, thanks to each other, it sounds good, but it needs to be in the right context. You need to know what's right or wrong. So that you can step out of that box creatively when you want to. You can be like, bam, I'm going to play this weird thing and it's going to sound cool. Rather than all I know is weird things and they don't know how to play properly. Exactly. You know, it has to come back to learning what's already been done. But like learning where the box is and when you can step outside of it. And also just knowing that one note, playing one note over and over again is sometimes awesome. And even like you have a bell or something like that or even a cymbal. Alan Watts would do that all the time. Yeah, just Just be like... uh, he, this is what he said. You go like, "What is Zen?" Uh, 
Like, if you don't get it when you hear that, then, like... There's no other moment. There's no other way to uh, say it better. It just hits you, and it's waves, and then I feel like that's basically all. Everything is yeah. little vibrations, vibrations. The elements are all just vibrating, and... There's one of the things about... Yeah, there's one of the things... Like, that reminds me of uh, one of the, like, lines about Zen. Uh, I think it was Alan Watts talking about him talking with this... Uh, one of, it's just, like, his Zen master.